The human mind has been locked away since the beginning of humankind, and there's not an easy communica uh, well, communication channel in and out of it. We speak, we draw, we communicate with other people, but that's a limited bandwidth. You can only share so much. When we get down to the ability to literally tap into the computers that reside in the brain and get information in and out of them, suddenly we have a huge expansion of what we're capable of. Primarily, right now, people are looking at movement control, such as paralysis or spinal cord injury, how they can read the signals out of the brain and bypass the damaged areas and restore movement and control to people. And that's a big plus. Yeah, and we're going to go down that rabbit hole a little further because we have a couple different technologies out there. One of them is Elon Musk's Neuralink, which frightens a lot of people that are watching this right now. Um, but when you're talking about opening the human mind, there's a transcendental element to that. It's not just raw data in there, it's capability, right? Right, that's true. And everybody shares a lot of skills that are lost if they can't communicate them properly. There's an old African proverb that says, when an old man dies, a library burns to the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, all of the experiences you've had in your life are locked away in your head, and only the handful who are articulate writers or producers of scripts or works of manuscripts that carry that information, textbooks, can get that out to people. Mm -hmm. We're reaching a stage now where you may be able to transfer whole blocks of experience and knowledge in a few moments by literally opening up channels of data into your brain. One of the things it says here in my notes is nature has limited I.O. Ah, uh, yes, I.O. In, for minds. What does that even mean? That's input and output. Okay. So what are your primary panel, uh, channels? Your mouth, you speak, your hands for communicating on a keyboard perhaps, or the works that you create with your hands and your mind. And that has really been the rule for many, many thousands of years. Recently, we found with printed word, with recorded sound, with video, we can transfer a lot more experience and information. And the problem is, are we using it properly? When we get into the bandwidth that's available by directly tapping into the brain, we suddenly have a wealth of experience that can be transferred from one person to another. And recent experiments have shown how you can actually transfer memories or even alter or erase memories. All of this is an exploration to see how we can open up the brain, just like you can open up the hard drive of a computer mm -hmm. and have full access to it, without, of course, destroying the autonomy of the individual person. And you say this is a function of nature that has limited it. Do you believe there has been any other kind of programming interference and so forth? Well, I would say I don't see anything directly uh, indicated, but I do know that there was never any real reason to change the amount of input and output that any brain and any animal had. Right. It, it wasn't until we developed spoken and then written language that we were able to do it in any significant way. And if you think about it, libraries were the repositories of knowledge and even that became a tool of warfare the library of alexandria was destroyed twice right because limiting the knowledge and information of a culture made them weak they didn't have access to the tools of the trade they didn't have access to the information they'd saved so it actually became a very negative thing to be able to destroy all their information today of course information is stored everywhere and it's available everywhere so the thought of losing it all doesn't really make sense right now. No, it doesn't, because it's in the cloud. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but, okay, so going back just for a moment before we move on here and get down, dig down into these technologies, um, the, the transcendental part I talked about a moment ago. When we think of indigenous cultures, mm -hmm. oftentimes they already had more advanced technologies mentally. Um, the telepathy, the ability to see beyond time and space, know when someone was coming, remote view and all that, which really were our innate human capacities. And it seems as though those were actually kind of limited and shut down as we became more sophisticated, more educated. Well, I think one of the things that has to be explored is how we always talk about five senses, but we really have far more than that. Far more, yes. Even the sensation of being thirsty is a sense, the sensation of balance, the vestibular system, that's a sense. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency to raise a gate against noise. Mm -hmm. So things that we don't fully process, things that happen in the background that don't seem to have significance in the moment, mm -hmm. we tend to ignore. Mm -hmm. But the brain doesn't forget them or doesn't ignore them internally. So people who are creative appear to have the ability to lower that noise threshold and still remain functional. 
Yes. Uh, of course, they always say that many artists are mad, but that's a matter of opinion. I that's would a say. matter of, yeah, insanity is a matter of in opinion. <laughs> but I would say that we have many other channels of communication besides body language and facial, nonverbal and, yeah, non yeah, communication it. that we use to transfer information from other people. And there could be other channels we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't discount the possibility. I just know that what's been most effective for us is what we're able to measure, record, play back, see and share on a very clear level. Mm -hmm. Well, it's that scientific materialism for you, isn't That's it? That's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about um, the Neuralink because we're talking about interface with AI and their, its interface with the brain. And that's the first thing that comes up in most people's minds who look into this is Elon Musk's Neuralink. And it frightens people because they think, oh my God, we're all going to be tethered to a central computer and Minority Report and everything else. They're going to know what we're thinking. And so that's the first place that people who are um, concerned about AI go. But let's talk about the reality of what it actually is, what it's designed to do right now. Uh, compared to what it's thought to be used for in the future. All right. So that is a valid concern that we could be um, we could be vulnerable to more sorts of uh, attacks we never imagined before. But mm -hmm. primarily, what this is about is getting information out of the human skull that can be used to help make life better. Mm -hmm. And so the initial studies were looking at movement control. And some of the initial studies also showed that we could predict from the firings of groups of nerve cells, neurons in the brain, what you were thinking of doing. And this could be translated into actual commands to move a peripheral such as a robotic limb or mm -hmm. play a video game or operate a machine. And with the proper technology, it could be routed to a paralyzed limb so you could take control of it once again. So it was actually done in really the true spirit of beneficiality, making people able to live more fully and repair damage that occurred. I, wasn't it specifically targeted for brain injury and spinal cord injury? Yes, that's exactly correct. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of work done previously using compounds like oxytocin and high levels of oxygen right. that allowed nerve tissue to actually heal mm -hmm. to a large degree. But there are limits to what can be done with that. Mm -hmm. This allows you the ability to actually bypass a missing chunk of nerve tissue. If you can make a model of a part of the brain, the brain and what it's doing, and you can replicate its function, you can then replace that with something that isn't going to age or wear out in the same way that brain tissue would. It's not, suspect, uh, it's not subject to disease or uh, chemicals or poisons. It's something that actually could be recorded and played back and restructured again. Mm -hmm.